Hi everybody, welcome to Storytime with Paul. Today I'm reading The Biggest Bear by Lind Ward. Lind Ward was an artist who lived from 1905 to 1985, born in Chicago, educated at Columbia University Teachers College. He studied in Germany where he became interested in wood engravings and woodcuts, and he was most known for his woodcut illustrations in his wordless novels, the first one published in 1929 and he won the coveted Caldecott Medal for The Biggest Bear in 1953. The book was published in 1952, and this was my favorite book um, as a kid, and I want to read it for you here today. Johnny Orchard lived on the farm farthest up the valley and closest to the woods. On the hill behind the barn, Johnny's grandfather had planted a few apple trees. These were the only apple trees in the valley, and they were known as Orchard's Orchard. Remember, because the family name is Orchard as well. Whenever Johnny went down the road to the store for a piece of maple sugar or something, he always felt humiliated. The other barns in the valley usually had a bear skin nailed up to dry. But never Johnny's barn. See all the bear skins? Every fall for three years, Mr. McLean had come in with a bear. And one evening, Mr. Pennell had just stepped out to the edge of his nearest field and shot three in a row as they came heading for the tall timber. Wow, shot three bears. It is true that Johnny's grandfather had met a bear once when he was on the way back from picking apples but he had gone in one direction while the bear had gone in another. When Johnny asked him why, his grandfather said, better a bear in the orchard than an orchard in the bear. It was very humiliating. See, that's a play on words, orchard and the bear, because Johnny's grandfather didn't want to get eaten by the bear. Boy, look at that picture. See the apples falling out of the basket? Johnny said, if I ever see a bear, I'll shoot him so fast he won't know what hit him. And we'll have the biggest bear skin in the whole valley. And there he goes with his hunting rifle. After he had gone quite a way in the woods, he came to a place where there was a big stump. And something seemed to be moving in the bushes behind it. It was a bear, all right. Oh, look at the little cub. He seemed hungry, so Johnny gave him a piece of maple sugar. On the way home, the bear ate all the maple sugar Johnny had in his pocket. Isn't that cute? Johnny's mother and father were a little surprised to see that Johnny had really brought a bear back with him. Johnny's grandfather said, Humph, I suppose you know what a bear likes to eat. It was dad scratching his head. What are we going to do with this bear? The bear liked the milk that was meant for the calves. <laughs> he liked the mash meant for the chickens. Uh-oh. Seems the bear's getting into everything. He liked the apples in the orchard. He liked pancakes on Sunday morning. See him licking the plate. And most especially, he liked the maple sugar Johnny brought him from the store. There was hardly anything he didn't like, and Johnny's mother got pretty upset when he started looking for things on the kitchen shelves. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. This bear is turning into trouble. In the fall, Mr. McCarroll got pretty upset when the bear spent a night in his cornfield. In the winter, he had a wonderful time with the bacons and hams in the Pennell's smokehouse. Man, it looks like somebody's been chewing on that ham bone. See the bite taken out of the bacon up here? It was bad enough that he emptied all the sap buckets when the McLeans were tapping their maple trees in the spring. Wow. But it was worse later when he got in the McLean's shed and drank out most of their maple syrup. 
He was always eating, it seemed, and he grew pretty fast and got pretty big. That is one big bear. Finally, Mr. McLean started talking to Mr. Pennell. They both went to see Mr. McCarroll. Then they all came to see Johnny and his father. Hmm, the men got to talking. What they had to say about Johnny's bear was plenty. He was a trial and a tribulation to the whole valley. Kind of a dejected look on the bear's face here and Johnny's face. See the men kind of arguing here with Mr. McCarroll? They look pretty grim. After the neighbors had left, Johnny's father explained to Johnny that the bear would have to go back to the woods. So the next morning, Johnny started out. They walked for miles due west on an old lumber road, way past Baldwin's Hill, to an old clearing that was overgrown with raspberries. Johnny explained to the bear that the time had come for him to go and live in the woods like other bears. He gave the bear a last hug and started the long walk home. That's sad. While he was doing chores the next morning, Johnny saw that the bear hadn't stayed in the woods very long. Look who's peeking around the corner. So Johnny started out again, due east this time, to the Blueberry Bluff, way past Watson's Hill. And when Johnny left him, the bear was eating blueberries very happily. Look at those cliffs. But two days later, he was back again. Hanging out with the pigs. This time, Johnny took him due south and got a boat and rowed two miles out in the lake and left him on Gull's Island, which is a pretty big island. But the next morning, there he was, not even very wet. Johnny and his father talked it over, and they decided there was only one thing to do. Johnny said he would do it. You know what that is. They didn't really have to go very far, but Johnny somehow kept on walking. They went north this time. There were no roads here, and it was a part of the woods where Johnny had never been before. And indeed, these woods look pretty ominous, don't they? At last they stopped. Johnny seemed to have a hard time getting a bullet in the gun. While he was working with it, the bear seemed to get a whiff of something. Without warning, he took off through the woods. Johnny went with him. You'll notice that's the front cover of the book. They went through the woods so fast that Johnny lost his gun, but he held on to the rope. They seemed to be heading for a sort of little log house. They went through the doorway pretty fast and something came down with a bang and they were prisoners. Bear trap. When Johnny looked around, he saw the bear was happily chewing on a big lump of maple sugar that had been put in the trap for bait. Pretty soon some men came. They were a little surprised to see Johnny in there. They explained to Johnny that they were going that they were getting animals for the zoo in the city. They were delighted with Johnny's bear. He was much bigger than than they, than they had even hoped for. Get near the end. He will have a fine place to live and all he wants to eat. The men told Johnny. And you can come and see him whenever you want to. And I'm waving at Johnny. But look at the bear with his head poking out. And I'll always bring him maple sugar, said Johnny. So the bear is in the zoo in a cage. And up 
there on that little sign, it says biggest bear. You can see right there. What do you guys think about the biggest bear? Post your comments below. Give the video a thumb up. And also, if you want, any uh, mentions of your favorite uh, books.